children of Fair Lawn. So nice to see you. I'm Miss Kate, and this is my friend. Would you like to say hello, friend? Rawr. Yeah, look what I have today. I have a dinosaur. Does anyone know what kind of dinosaur this is? Well, let's see. I see one, two, three, three horns. Dinosaurs with three horns generally start with the word tri, because tri means three, and this guy is a triceratops. One, two, three horns, tri, like a tricycle has three wheels, a triangle has three sides, a triceratops has three horns. And now my friend Triceratops and I are gonna lead you in singing hi, hello, and how are you? So let's get those waving hands. Are you ready? We're gonna count to three. One, two, three. Hi, hello, and how are you? Rawr, how are you? Rawr, how are you? Rawr, hi, hello, and how are you? Rawr, how are you today? How are you today, boys and girls? It's so nice to see you. And today, as you probably can guess, we're having dinosaur stories. So before we get started, let's all give our biggest dinosaur roar at the count of three. One, two, three. Rawr. Good job. All right, and now I'm gonna put my T-Rex, or my T-Rex, um, my Triceratops over there. And we're gonna have our first story. Now, have you ever wished that you could have a pet dinosaur? I think all of us have thought about that at one time or another. Well, just in case you end up with a pet dinosaur, which would be very cool, this will tell you what to do. And the book is called How to Take Care of Your Dinosaur. Congratulations on your new dinosaur. When you first meet him, you might find that he is surprisingly shy. But don't worry, he'll soon come out of his shell. There he is. It's really important to make your dinosaur feel at home. So why not start with a healthy breakfast to give him plenty of energy for the day ahead? Your dinosaur may be slow to try new foods, but he'll quickly find his appetite. After breakfast, your dinosaur may have a lot of energy. This is your, this is a perfect time to go for a walk in the park. However, it won't be long until your pet has to poop. So it's advisable to carry a bucket and a shovel at all times. Sometimes a bucket and a shovel will not be enough. P-U. Most dinosaurs can't swim, and your pet may be frightened near water. It's best to avoid playing near beaches, lakes, or rivers. But a small pond or puddle can be fun, as long as your dinosaur is properly supervised. Dinosaurs love company. Why not encourage your pet to meet some new people and make friends? This can also be a good opportunity to teach your dinosaur about sharing. Remember to feed your dinosaur regularly and make sure he gets plenty of rest. If you're quiet and calm, he may settle down for a nap. Maintaining a routine is important, too, so make sure to get your dinosaur home at a reasonable time. All dinosaurs thrive on bedtime routine. After dinner, a relaxing bath is a good idea. Make sure the water is not too hot and always use the appropriate amount of soap. When your dinosaur is squeaky clean, consider reading a bedtime story. Don't choose books that are too exciting as these might keep your dinosaur pet awake. Your dinosaur story time should be calm and quiet. And always remember, if you treat him well, your dinosaur can be a friend for life. The end. So that sounds wonderful. Should we all get dinosaur pets? Maybe, right? That would be fun. Okay, but now it's time for a rhyme. And as you can guess, it's a dinosaur rhyme. So I'll get my temporary felt board here. 
And I'm going to put some dinosaurs up here. Let's do some counting. One, two, three, four, five. Five. Now, can we put up a hand? And we're going to pretend that each finger is a dinosaur. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. This is called Five Tremendous Dinosaurs. Five tremendous dinosaurs letting out a roar. One flew away. Woo! Fly away that thumb. Now there are one, two, three, four. Four! Because we had five, one flew away. Now there's four. Four tremendous dinosaurs crashing down a tree. One went away. Now there are one, two, three, three. Because we had four, one away, one, one went away. Now there's three. Three tremendous dinosaurs eating tiger stew. Another went away. Bye-bye. Now there are one, two, two. We had three. One went away. Now there's two. Two tremendous dinosaurs having lots of fun. A volcano blew up. Oh no. Now there is one. One. We had two. Now we have one. One tremendous dinosaur, he must have weighed a ton, went to join his friends, and now there are none. Boo hoo hoo, we miss the dinosaurs. Good job, everyone. All right, and now when we do dinosaur stories, I hate to say it, but there is a lot of up and down. You have to kind of be able to tromp around like dinosaurs. So even though I've been doing everything from a seating position, I have to go forward and get up. So everybody get on up and here, we'll do this. Oh, I think I can be seen. Okay, guys, are you ready? This is called Dinosaur, Dinosaur, Turn Around. Dinosaur, Dinosaur, Turn Around. Dinosaur, Dinosaur, Touch the Ground. Dinosaur, Dinosaur, Roar, Roar, Roar. Dinosaur, Dinosaur, Shut the Door. All right, we're gonna do it again. We're gonna do it a little faster, you ready? Dinosaur, dinosaur, turn around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, touch the ground. Dinosaur, dinosaur, rawr, rawr, rawr. Dinosaur, dinosaur, shut the door. Yes, you did it. You know what? I think we could probably try the super fast dino challenge. Should we try it? Should we go for it? Okay, here we go. We're going to do it so fast. Count of three. One, two, three. Dinosaur, dinosaur, turn around. Dinosaur, dinosaur, touch the ground. Dinosaur, dinosaur, rawr, rawr, rawr. Dinosaur, dinosaur, shut that door. Yay, you did it. Awesome job. All right, everybody, down again. And then we'll put this down again. And it's time for another story. Let's do this one. So many good dinosaur stories. It was so hard to choose. This is called Crunch the, so the Shy Dinosaur. Do you know dinosaurs can be shy too? One can be shy. This is Crunch. Crunch is shy, so you'll have to be the first to say hello. Go on, say hello. You ready, guys? We're gonna all say hello. Hi, Crunch. Hi, Crunch. Oh my, you said it too loudly. Crunch seems to have run off. Do you see him anywhere? Do you see Crunch? Oh, I see Crunch. See him? He likes the happy birthday song. Do you know that song? Do you? Okay. If you sing it, maybe he'll come out. Let's try it, guys. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Crunch. Happy birthday to you. <gasps> Look, it worked. He's out. He loves birthdays because someone has one every day. He loves days in general. He's very positive. So let's try to say hello again. You can try it quietly so you don't scare him. Okay, we're going to do it very quietly. You ready? Hello, Crunch. Oop, that was too quiet. He's gotten uncomfortably close to you. Try it one more time in a nice medium sounding voice, bold yet gentle. Here we go. One, two, three. Hello, Crunch. Perfect. 
You can tell he liked that because he's an appropriate distance from you and because he put on his most fun hat and is dancing. Now you can tell him your name. Say it clearly so he can paint it on that big rock. He loves painting names. So at the count of three, you're going to say your name. You ready? One, two, three. Miss Kate. There. Your name. There's your name perfectly painted. You can't see it because it's behind that big pile of leaves. Say thank you, Crunch. One, two, three. Thank you, Crunch. Oh. Your voice startled him. Maybe now would be a good time to be very quiet and very still and see if he climbs back down, okay? Oh, good job being quiet and still. Sometimes it's important to let shy dinosaurs come to you at their own pace. Crunch is tired from all that climbing and painting and socializing. You can remind him that he should go to sleep by saying, Good night, Crunch. Ready? One, two, three. Good night, Crunch. He must have thought you said, Good light, Crunch. What? Say, Good night, Crunch. One more time. You ready, guys? One, two, three. Good night, Crunch. Maybe we could lie down when we say it to show him how nice sleep is. You ready? Let's all lie down. One, two, three. Good night, Crunch. You did it. He passed out immediately. We should probably let him sleep. If you wouldn't mind, please close this book very gently. The end. So Crunch is sleeping. Good job, guys. Okay, so let's see what is next. Well, I have to tell you, it's going to be more standing up. So let's all get up again. I'm going to fix my screen. I think I probably want to have my head in here. Okay, there we go. All right. This is called, I'm a mean old dino. I'm a mean old dino, big and tall. Here is my tail, here is my claw. When I get all hungry, I just growl. Look out, folks, I'm on the prowl. Okay, we're gonna do it again. You ready? We're gonna be mean old dinos. One. I'm a mean old dino, big and tall. Here is my tail, here is my claw. When I get all hungry, I, I just growl. Look out, folks, I'm on the prowl. Good job. Okay, and now it's Did You Ever See a Dino? And it's going to start with munching his lunch. That's how we're going to start. Okay, you ready? Did you ever see a dino, a dino, a dino? Did you ever see a dino munching his lunch? He's lunching and crunching and munching and crunching. Did you ever see a dino munching his lunch? Did you ever see a dino, a dino, a dino? Did you ever see a dino stomping his feet? He's stomping and stamping and stomping and stamping. Did you ever see a dino stomping his feet? Did you ever see a dino, a dino, a dino? Did you ever see a dino flapping his wings? He's flapping and flapping and flipping and flapping. Did you ever see a dino flapping his wings? One more, let's do swing his tail. Did you ever see a dino, a dino, a dino? Did you ever see a dino wagging his tail? He's wigging and wagging and wigging and wagging. Did you ever see a dino wagging his tail? Good job, everyone. Hooray, have a seat again. Okay. 
And now it's time for a very silly story. It's a school story. And it's called, We Don't Eat Our Classmates. And this is the same author and illustrator as Mother Bruce. If you like those books, you'll like this too. So, so he's a very funny guy, Ryan T. Higgins. Penelope Rex was nervous. It's not every day a little T-Rex starts school. What will my classmates be going to, what are my classmates going to be like? Will they be nice? How many teeth will they have? This was a very important question. Penelope's mom bought her a new backpack with ponies on it. Ponies were Penelope's favorite because ponies are delicious. Penelope's dad packed her a lunch of 300 tuna sandwiches and one apple juice. Finally, the big day came and Penelope Rex was very surprised to find out that all of her classmates were children. So she ate them because children are delicious. Penelope Rex, said Mrs. Noodleman. We don't eat our classmates. Please spit them all out at once. So she did. It was not the best way to start school. Still, Penelope was determined to have a good first day. She tried hard to make friends at recess. She finger painted some of her best work. She even saved Griffin Emery a seat at lunch. You can sit here. Penelope started to notice that everyone was making friends but her. It was lonely. When she got home, her dad asked about her first day of school. I didn't make any friends, Penelope cried. None of the children wanted to play with me. Penelope Rex, her father asked. Did you eat your classmates? Well, maybe sort of just a little bit. Sometimes it's hard to make friends, said her dad, especially if you eat them. You see, Penelope, children are the same as us on the inside, just tastier. That gave Penelope a lot to think about. The next day, Penelope tried really hard. But poor Penelope, she could not stop herself from eating her classmates. Mrs. Noodleman, Penelope ate William Amatado again. And they were all afraid of her. Except Walter. Walter was a goldfish. So Penelope tried to make friends with him. Will you be my friend? Chomp! cried Penelope. He's eating my finger! Wah! Once Penelope found out what it was like to be someone's snack, she lost her appetite for children. She stopped eating her classmates, even when Cece Woodman spilled barbecue sauce all over herself. And soon Penelope made friends. Found you! Do you want a brownie? I help make them. Now, even when children look especially delicious, she peeks at Walter and remembers what it's like when someone tries to eat you. And Walter the goldfish stares right back at her and licks his lips. Because dinosaurs are delicious. The end. And now, did you ever wonder why we don't have any dinosaurs here with us today? Why are there no more dinosaurs on the earth? Well, that's because dinosaurs are now extinct. And does everyone understand what, what extinct means? Extinct means that they're gone forever. We no longer have dinosaurs. But why are they extinct? What happened to them? Well, scientists have been trying to figure out for a very long time what actually happens to the dinosaurs, and this is what they think might have happened to them. Very, very, very long time ago, the earth was very hot and sunny, and it had so much sun that lots of plants grew everywhere. 
And there were so many plants, the creatures roamed the earth eating these plants. Well, some of these creatures were very big and some of them were very small. The biggest was the Brachiosaurus. The Brachiosaurus was as tall as a one, two, three, four, a four story building. And it weighed as much as 60 cars. Can you imagine what 60 cars weighs? And this Brachiosaurus just ate these plants all day long. It took all day for that Brachiosaurus to stay full. It was just constantly eating. One of the smallest little dinosaurs was the Con Consognathus. And here's the Consognathus. It's very small. It was actually the size of a chicken. Bop, 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 bop. It was a little bitty tiny dinosaur. Also a plant eater. Some dinosaurs were very fast. This is the Struthemaeus, and the Struthemaeus could run faster than a racehorse. It could run up to 30 miles per hour, which is super fast. That's like a car driving through town, not on the highway. Some dinosaurs move very slowly, especially if they were very long. This is the Diplodocus. And the Diplodocus was so long from tip to tail, it was as long as one, two, three, four, five, six cars, six car lengths. So Diplodocus, also a plant eater, had to spend all day long eating just to stay alive and to stay full. So where you have plant eating dinosaurs, there was also meat eating dinosaurs that ate those plant eating dinosaurs. And here was the most ferocious. This was the T-Rex. The T-Rex ate other plant eating dinosaurs. And this was a huge dinosaur. He was as tall as a telephone pole. Think about the telephone poles around your neighborhood. That's how tall the T-Rex was. And one tooth was six inches long. And you might say, well, I'm not sure what six inches looks like. I'll show you six inches. It's from right here to right here, between my fingers. That's how long a tooth was in the T-Rex. Think about your little teeth. Imagine if your teeth were that big. Okay, so now we understand about how these dinosaurs live, but what actually happened to them? Well, what dinosaurs say is that an asteroid came down from outer space and hit the roof or hit the roof, hit the earth. And you might guess, well, what's an asteroid? An asteroid's a giant rock from outer space and it came down, woo, and slammed into the earth. Now, when a giant, giant rock slams into the earth, what do you think it creates? It created a hole plus a whole lot of dust. Dust went everywhere. There was so much dust in the air that the dust covered up the sun. And if you no longer have sun, do you know what that means? What happens to the plants without sun? Yeah, the plants die because plants have to have sun to survive. And if there aren't any plants to eat, what happens to the plant eating dinosaurs? Yeah, they started to die too. And then if there's no plant-eating dinosaurs, what happens to the meat-eating dinosaurs? Yep, that would be the end of the meat-eating dinosaurs. And then without the sun, the earth got very cold. So the earth stayed very cold for a very long time. And finally, the sun came back and we had new plant and animal life, but no longer dinosaurs. So that's what scientists think happened. But who knows, maybe you'll grow up and you can find out more information about what exactly happened to the dinosaurs. If you love them, then do some research. And the library should hopefully be open again very soon. And we have so many dinosaur books and you can come in and you can take out dinosaur books and you can learn more. And maybe you can tell me what you've learned about the dinos. All right, and now this is our final regular book that's called dinosaurs dinosaurs and it's a short one and this shows us all different kinds of dinosaurs a long time ago 
there were dinosaurs. There were dinosaurs with horns. This is our Tarceratops. And dinosaurs with spikes. There were dinosaurs with clubs on their tails. And dinosaurs with armored plates. There were dinosaurs with sails on their backs. And dinosaurs with hard bony heads. There were dinosaurs with long, sharp claws and long, sharp teeth. And here's our friend T-Rex. And dinosaurs with long, long necks and long, long tails. This is our friend Diplodocus. There were big dinosaurs and small dinosaurs. There were fierce dinosaurs and scared dinosaurs. There were hungry dinosaurs and very tired and very sleepy dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, dinosaurs, a long time ago. The end. And now we're gonna do my favorite dinosaur song. And it's actually a song by Lori Berkner, and we're going to listen to the words of the song, and we're going to act it out, and we're going to stomp around like dinosaurs. So for this song, everyone's going to need to stand up. So stand up. I'm going to fix my computer again. Okay, let's see if we can get her going. Oh, hang on. So nice and loud. Great job, everyone. And now it's time to sing. The more we get together, I'm going to bring my Triceratops back. And we're first going to sing it like human children. And then we're going to sing it like dinos. Are you ready? So first, like human children. One, two, three. The more we get together, together, together. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. 
call your friends are my friends and my friends are your friends. The more we get together, the happier we'll be. And now like dinos, you ready? One, two, three. Great job, everyone. And it was so nice seeing you today. Thank you for listening. And you'll see me again soon. And hopefully it will be in person in the library. Because I miss everyone. Bye-bye, boys and girls and families. Have a great day.